Good morning, good morning. Welcome back to Coffee in the Word. Happy Sunday. Oh, that's good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Well, this morning on the Revised Common Lectionary, we're going to start off in Jeremiah, and then we have a reading in the Psalms, and then we're going to Deuteronomy, and then another reading in the Psalms, and then we're going to Philemon, and then the Gospel of Luke. So, let's get started. Jeremiah chapter 18, verses 1 through 11, and as always, may God bless the reading of his word. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, Come, go down to the potter's house, and there I will let you hear my words. So I, when I, so I went down to the potter's house, and there he was working at his wheel. The vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hands, and he reworked it into another vessel, as seemed good to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. Can I not do with you, O house of Israel, just as this potter has done, says the Lord? Just like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. At one moment I may declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will pluck up and break down and destroy it. But if that nation, concerning which I have spoken, turns from its evil, I will change my mind about the disaster and I, that I intended to bring on it. And at another moment I may declare, to con declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will build it and build and plant it. But if it does evil in my sight, not listening to my voice, then I will change my mind about the good that I had intended to do to it. Now therefore, say to the people of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Thus says the Lord, Look, I am a potter shaping evil against you and devising a plan against you. Turn now, all of you, from your evil way and amend your ways and your doings. Mm. Uh. All right. Going to uh, Psalm 139, verses 1 through 6, and then 13 through 18. O Lord, you have searched, searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. Amen. Love, Psalm 139. All right. Get a little coffee here. And I'm drinking out of one of my father's mugs uh, that's red clay and gray clay kind of mixed together. And after you fire it, it gives it that, that color and it puts a clear glaze on it. One of my favorites. All right. Going to the Old Testament, uh, we're going to go to Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 15 through 20. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today, by loving the Lord your God, walking in His ways, and observing His commandments, decrees, and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away, and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you were crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. 
I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying Him, and holding fast to Him. For that means, for that means life to you and length of days, so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to, to give to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Amen. All right, next we have another reading in the Psalms. We're going to Psalm 1. Here we go. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all they do they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Amen. 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 All right, the, the epistle lesson this morning. Uh, Philemon chapter 1, verses 1 through 21. Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our dear friend and co-worker, to Apphia, our sister, to Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. When I remember you in my prayers, I always thank my God, because I hear of your love for all the saints and your faith towards the Lord Jesus, I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective when you perceive all the good that we may do for Christ. I have indeed received much joy and encouragement from your love because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you, my brother. For this reason, though I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do your duty, yet I would rather appeal to you on the basis of love, and I, Paul, do this as an old man, and now also as a prisoner of Christ Jesus. I am appealing to you for my child Onesimus, whose father I have become during my imprisonment. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful both to you and to me. I am sending him, that is, my own heart, back to you. I wanted to keep him with me so that he might be of service to me in your place during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I prefer to do nothing without your consent in order that your good deed might be voluntary and not something forced. Perhaps this is the reason he was separated from you for a while, so that you might have him back forever. No longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So if you consider me your partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has wronged you in any way, or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, and writing this with my own hand, I will repay it. I say nothing about your owing me or even your own self. Yes, brother, let me have this benefit from you and the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confident in your obedience, I am writing to you, knowing that you will do even more than I say. All right. All right. We're going to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 14, verses 25 through 33. Now large crowds were traveling with him, and he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even life itself, cannot be my disciple. Whoever do does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it. Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, 
all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, This fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going out to wage war against another king, will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with ten thousand to oppose the one who comes against him with twenty thousand? If he cannot, then, while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. So therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. And this is the word of the Lord. All right. And as always on Sundays, the Revised Common Lectionary offers a series of prayers. Uh, there is a thematic prayer, an intercessory prayer, and a scripture prayer. So I'm going to uh, share a few of those with you. So uh, let us pray. God of power and justice, like Jeremiah, you weep over those who wander from you, turn aside to other gods, and enter into chaos and destruction. By your tears and through your mercy, teach us your ways and write them on our hearts, so that we may follow you faithfully, uh, so that we may follow faithfully the path you show us. Amen. And then, we praise your abiding guidance, O God. For you sent us Jesus, our teacher and Messiah, to model for us the way of love for the whole universe. We offer these prayers of love on behalf of ourselves and our neighbors, and on behalf of your creation and our fellow creatures. And then the scripture prayer. Creator God, you form us on the wheel of life as a potter molds the clay. Shape us into holy vessels, bearing the mark of your wise crafting, that we may remain strong and useful through the years uh, of faithful and obedient service. In Christ's name, amen. All right. Well, I hope and pray that you all have a fantastic day. And uh, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. So be safe, be happy, and be blessed. And we will see you tomorrow morning on Coffee in the Word. God bless.